Good morning, Lehigh. I'm Ariel Ranker, and this is Real Lehigh News, your most trustworthy source for up-to-the-minute coverage of the happenings, politics, and scandals of Lehigh University. Oh. Oh. We begin with our final update from the Lehigh presidential campaign trail. After a tightly contested election, a clear winner has finally emerged. It was previously neck and neck between the last three candidates standing, but at long last, the next president of Lehigh University has been chosen. Coming in at 0% of the vote was the ghost of Asa Packer. Former President Packer, the founder of Lehigh University, had a strong start to his campaign after being embraced by former Professor Gunter voters who believed that Gunter's social policies were too progressive. Unfortunately, this hot streak did not hold out, and questions about his extremely advanced age and lack of physical form decreased voter support. Next, coming in at 33% of the vote, was Tony from the Goose. Tony was a popular candidate dedicated to enacting major reforms at Lehigh, most of which involved sandwich-based solutions. Unfortunately, Lehigh's influential vegan club came out in strong opposition to the charismatic candidate, running several negative ad campaigns against him. At the end of the day, poor Tony just didn't make the cut. He found himself sliced a little too thin, too thoroughly soaked in the au jus of his own ambition, folded into the meatball sub of failure. But it ain't his fault. Blame it on the goose. And finally, the next president of Lehigh University, elected with 66% of the vote, is none other than William Andrew Best, the popular but controversial associate professor of mechanical engineering. Professor Best has made waves at Lehigh for a number of reasons. But his policy stance that no professor should ever grade homework or exams secured him a landslide victory. His acceptance speech, Professor... Is that an actual error? Is that an honest to God typo? Huh, in his... Oh, that doesn't even sound like a sentence. So mad. In his acceptance speech, Professor Best promised to add a class dedicated solely to the Space Shuttle Challenger in the first, second, and third year engineering curricula, as well as to strong arm ABET into accrediting the ideas major. And with that, the campaign season has come to an end. Thank you to all of our loyal viewers for following along with us for this nail-biting election. Turn. Now we have an update from our biggest fans, the Lehigh Public Relations Department. Again, we have received yet another letter, which disturbingly was not sent through the mail, but instead appeared on my pillow last night, despite the fact that I live on the third floor and lock my door. Here we go. Huh. Um. We know where you live. Your club advisor can't save you now. Turn! That's it. I quit. Good luck finding anyone else who will put up with this. This place is worse than the brown and white. No big loss there, but since she's gone and can't do anything about it, let's take a minute to review how good she is at her job. Cease and desist. Season the sis. Seize yourself. Seize the day. See the- Hi sisters! Look at all the ads. We guys sending us ads. <laughs> Fuck. It's not a real letter. I want you to know that I got three hours of sleep last oh, night. Oh no. <laughs> and the reason I got three hours of sleep last night it's because I was assembling a shelf. And UC Berkeley. Did I just say UC Berkeley? You'll just have to cut that bit. <laughs> Even accounting for logistics. 
logistical health. Negative effect on academic performance that would be caused by sitting alone in a tiny room all day with a global pandemic. And ranking each student using animal stickers. Might accept, ex 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 expect Professor of Mechan- I hate myself. With the start of in- fuck, I have to turn, don't I? Oh, I'm an idiot, sorry. Can we start over? I missed a word. Wait, am I turning in? Designed rules to keep student- fuck. Don't you want to be rem you don't want- fuck me. It's making the sound. It's really sharp. Wow, it really doesn't cut hair. Okay, I guess it's not that- oh, there- it cuts hair. This week, we were. nope, nope, <laughs> nope. I can't say we, 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 we received, we received, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. God help us all. So sorry that there aren't enough bloopers for you. It's just cause I'm so damn good at my job. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was terrible. Yes, Ariel, you're right. It was terrible. So next time you think you can just come back here and and well, I'll tell you Okay, cool. Cool, Hi, we're doing nice it. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice I'm Ben. Yeah. I'm Am. Okay. Hi, I'm Victoria. Nice to meet you. Hi, my name's Sebastian. Nice to meet you too. So, shall we get on with the the questions? I guess. Yeah, let's let's do it. Um, let's do it. Let's. Fine. So, Am, let me ask you, what's your favorite Lehigh tradition? I would say, you know, like going to the. Leloff games. I think that's such a such a nice tradition, especially when we've, you know, I've maybe been to more home games than you, but um, yeah, especially when we have the home games. I mean, it's just such a nice time. How about you? What's your favorite Lehigh tradition? I would definitely say the annual uh, tuition increase. I think that's like a really good tradition that we that we stick to. That that nice little. Uh, However much increase every year. Yeah, I'm a huge love fan. Um, love I love the reactions. Yeah. I love I love the excitement. How much is it gonna be? Okay, uh, 40 years in the future, you become super wealthy and you wanna donate something to Lehigh. What is it? Um, I think I'd give a building. Don't know what it, oh, I know, a new dorm. Um, so that everyone, no more students have to be endure Dravo and it's um, asbestos, mold, um, mm -hmm. dust. Yeah, new, new dorms. I live in the new dorms now and they're they're pretty nice. So I de definitely give the the steel, the steel dormitories. Steel dormitories actually has a nice ring to it. So that's there probably we go. a good idea. Um, so Ben. Yes. If you had to create a new class at Lehigh, yeah. what would it be? I'd love to do like psychology of a fuck boy. Okay. You're asked to make transportation around campus more accessible and fluid. What's your solution? I know everybody's gonna say ski lift. I don't disagree with that idea. I think that it is, that would be ingenious. I think the fact that all the stairs at Lehigh are like different lengths is terrible. Um, it's terrible for my mental health because I can't like walk the same at the same pace. I gotta change the way my feet work to go up and down the stairs, um, which sucks. Um, so if we just installed like a ski lift from Farrington to Rathbone, like I think I'd be content. That's all I'm okay. asking for. That's it. That's all just I need. Just a, a ski lift. Um, I think I'd do escalators. They make outdoor escalators. I don't know why we don't have them. The inventor of the escalator went to Lehigh. So we just need outdoor escalators. Completely agreed. They should just put escalators all, just replace all the stairs. With escalators. Yeah, we don't, we don't need stairs. Those are so outdated. Your task to make transportation better on campus, more accessible and fluid. What's your solution? I'm feeling a little, a little zip line. Yeah, from the UC, we'll have it go like through what Packard Lab, all the way down to you know Farrington Square, you know all the all the way up, you know to whatever whatever house is highest on the hill. How about you? What would what would you do to make it more accessible? 
I kind of just thought of this. Um, mm -hmm. So we replace English one in the core curriculum mm -hmm. with skateboarding one. And mm. every student needs to pass and learn to skateboard. And then everyone gets a board. Uh, it's like part of tuition. Yes, so I agree. It can be a part this, of the skater university. If you yes, know. we can all become Tony Hawks. Someone very yeah. close to me uh, like told me one time they were like, uh, he was a skater boy and she said, see you later, boy. So I, mean, I think about that a lot. All right. Um, that was, I think that's all the questions. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. It was so great to meet you. It was Thank so you great. Thank you for coming along on the Zoom day with me. Thanks. Thanks for coming along too. This was great. Uh, you know, have a nice day. We'll, we'll catch you on the flip side, I guess. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully there's a, a second Zoom date. Maybe, in the future. maybe, yeah. Lehigh is known far and wide for its beautiful campus and striking Gothic Revival architecture. Every year, thousands of new undergraduate students flock to the Lehigh Valley to attend Lehigh University in no small part because of its reputation for beauty. Then they actually get here and realize how downright upsetting most of this architecture is. Like seriously, what the fuck went on here? Lehigh's campus looks like the Twister from The Wizard of Oz dumped a bunch of community college buildings onto Cornell. The highlight of Lehigh's architecture begins with the iconic University Center, with its gorgeous clock tower and beautifully intricate exterior. Lehigh does a magnificent job in utilizing juxtaposition in this building, as the grandiose exterior starkly contrasts the depressing food court inside, which now offers a soda fountain that dispenses the tears of broke underclassmen forced to overpay for their meal plans. The university unfortunately decided that the UC's purpose was not good enough, and it will soon be modified into the Clayton University Center, a hybrid of classic neo-Gothic architecture and horrific contemporary architecture which does not match at all. The new style will be completed with a giant glass room for the Board of Trustees to throw stones from. Ultimately, what the UC does best is protect our eyes from the monstrosity behind it better known as Tremblay Park. This large jumble of apartment-style housing comes complete with mold dripping from the shower heads and coronavirus seeping through the cracks in the walls. Lehigh at least recognized the need to demolish these buildings. However, an evil curse has been placed on the complex, preventing it from ever being torn down. Legend has it, John Simon only applied to be president of the university so he could continue to uphold the curse by sacrificing a passionate chemical engineering student every year to the blood gods. Luckily, no one ever notices because no one on this campus has actually met a passionate chemical engineer. A nice contrast to Tremblay is Linderman Library, which is possibly the only building on campus that is kind of hard to ride on. It's undoubtedly gorgeous, but most students graduate without even remembering what the inside looked like, as it's infested with freshmen, most likely bragging about how many cases of corona they've spread that week. Christmas Saucon was the first building Asa Packer purchased when he founded Lehigh. Apparently, Lehigh was founded in 2000 BC because this thing is falling to pieces. Years of attachments and renovations to the original building have ultimately lost the war against time, and what was probably once an acceptable building for Asa Packer to stable his pet Stegosaurus is now a grimy five-story dump with inexplicably hollow walls. No wonder they made the math department work there for so long. Across the street sits the Sealy G Mud Building, which houses the chem labs. There's nothing much to say about this building other than the exterior resembles a Best Western that has 2.5 stars in Expedia. After years of staring at only a few of these ugly-ass buildings, Lehigh decided that there just wasn't enough of these eyesores on campus. Thankfully, to combat this great predicament, there are the new dorms that help destroy the view from the hill. The Singleton, Maida, and Hitch houses were actually named specifically so they could be abbreviated to SMH because everyone who walks by these big-ass ugly space rocks shake their head in disappointment. Formerly known as the much cooler Bridge West, SMH are the youngest children of the family of Lehigh dorms. While all the other Lehigh dorms had tiny rooms with fluorescent lights, linoleum floors, and of course no AC, SMH students were equipped with a gym, a coffee shop, and mommy's permission to buy an iPhone when they were six, while everyone else had to wait until they were 13. The architects of the building originally modeled them after Linderman, but then after all simultaneously getting brain cancer, they scrapped any form of creativity in the design. The cancer was most likely the side effects from building too closely to the Tremblay blood gods. 
Opinions are mixed on these massive purple brick obelisks, but I guess it doesn't really matter what the architecture looks like as long as it's a clean, well-maintained place. And Lehigh sure has got that down. Hello, my name is Kyle Rifkin and I'm the Director of Member Engagement for the Lehigh University Cheese Club. My name is Nicole Elchar, I'm Director of Event Planning for Lehigh University Cheese Club. I'm Andrew McCausland and I'm the CFO or the Cheese Financial Officer. And we're going to be having some delicious cheese today. What is your preferred way to eat cheese? Usually through the mouth. Usually. Uh, I'm going to say in large quantities. With reckless abandon, I would say that. Yeah. What percentage of your meals include cheese? You know, if it doesn't have cheese, you got to take a cheese pill. That's what it is. Absolutely. If it's got to be a suppository, you got to get that cheese. Yeah, yeah. Probably 25% for me, though. I would, I would say like 40%, maybe. You have a new rival on the board. What is your response to WPI cheese? We haven't quite sent the email yet, but shortly we will be informing them that we will be acquiring them. However, I would like to make clear that this is not a hostile takeover, as it will be only be hostile if they make it hostile. First off, our original baby bell is looking sharp. Exquisite. This is gonna be good. I, I like the luscious red. I'm a fan of the luscious red out here. I like that it's um, a mini cheese wheel. It's nice and creamy, it's got some sharp notes. Yeah. I like it. I'm gonna be a little bit controversial here. Mm. It was oh. good, but it wasn't exceptional. You know, no mm. complaints, but mm. like nothing special. The no pizzazz. That's true, it is fairly mild. Given that it is wax, if they made a scented candle of this, I would enjoy it. You could put it in a pocket. Give, give me a mountain of these, you know, I'll down it. I don't mean to string you along, but next up we have Wegmans Reduced Fat Mozzarella Strain Cheese. Oh, it feels cold. Oh. Feels a little rubbery around the edges. Nice, and nice plastic. Some good aged dinosaur shell. How do you guys feel about biting it? Biting it? Mm. I, I didn't do it. Unforgivable offense. Mm. Off the cutting board. The whole point of ripping it in half is that I don't have to go to the gym. This is my exercise, okay? I do 25 reps a day, and that's how I get muscles like this. I think we have to remember to sniff this one. Oh yes. yes. Oh yeah, some good fruity. So snackable, so affordable. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Are you here for a Gouda time? If so, follow your heart smoked Gouda style slices is here for you, but surprisingly dairy free. Smells smoked. Oh, this is not American at all. Yeah, I feel like Goudas are a little bit softer. In block form, excellent. Oh, this one's definitely a five out of five. I think we can take back the- um... This is a six out of five. Just go, it goes for it, you know, it's a superstar. That hint of smokiness mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. so it's a little rugged, you know what I mean? Some, some good old 1930s rugged individualism, you know? Like, you, you, can, you can taste it. This one's not as portable. Yeah, it's not self-contained. It is in slice form, though. So you can just whip it out of your fridge, but you do have to be home to snack. Smoked Gouda style slices. Uh, it's a dairy-free cheese alternative. Interesting. Really? Interesting. Wow. You got us there. It's probably the best vegan cheese I've ever had, honestly. I could tell it wasn't quite Gouda, but it was still good as its own thing. Yeah, no, that's true. And, and that's what threw us off, so it was vegan. Do we have a pizza your heart yet? Next on the list is Lunchables Extra Cheesy Pizza. Got a good old, like, you know, like, cracker, like, bread base, and then, like, on top of it, just like, you know, something. Yeah. The cheese isn't the star of the show here. The cheese is the best friend here. It's the sidekick. Oh, and I just lost all the cheese. The nostalgia factor is going to weigh pretty heavily here. If you look at it on its own, I don't know if it can get much better than this. But I think as an assembled piece, we're looking at something that's pretty good. I, I don't know. Um, like, like someone can put a smiley face there, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, it just bright, it brightens your day. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you could, but we didn't. It, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a roller coaster. Like, part of it's like, it's really cool to be like just biting into that mountain. But on the other hand, once it falls off, you're done. Now that you're all cottage up in the video, we have Wegmans 4% milk fat cottage cheese. I have cottage cheese in my fridge right now. Oh, this will be an adventure. Yeah. I, I like it. It's not the it's not the most visually appealing. I it's, wouldn't want to serve yeah. this to my finest pets. Like, especially if they did not know what cottage cheese was. Oh yeah, 100%. That's true. That's true. It's the milkiness. It's like, you got these curds. It's like the, the stage before you get the cheese curds. They make those like mini containers of cottage no, cheese. Oh, I don't think so you, you can go yeah, for also it. Also, it's like oh, a, okay. I grab it out of the fridge. That's going to change things. Which was your favorite cheese of all? I liked the vegan Gouda cheese the best. 
And I'm sure that's different from both of you, but that was fantastic. I was the most satisfied with it in terms of like, it exceeded my expectations, mm -hmm. but that's mostly because my expectations started low. Which was your least favorite cheese? I, I might have to go against the nostalgia factor and say the Lunchable. Yeah, really? the Lunchable is not doing it for me. Just, yeah. uh, I don't feel like the cheese starred there in the best way that it could. See, maybe I'm just not a fan of cottage cheese, but I'm gonna have to go oh. with it. I'm, I'm gonna have to oh, take no. the controversial opinion here, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go against the Lunchable. <laughs> <laughs> That is the face of a man who does not appreciate cheese. Thanks for watching. This week's featured comment is by an award-winning campus organization.